as we begin to use these tools and have access to them, it changes us. It changes how we think. And it changes what we, we think we can do. And I, I believe, particularly in this frame here of, of manufacturing, um, I, I will say, I, I regard making, a, a, particularly the maker movement, as more of a prototyping revolution than a manufacturing revolution. It's easier to take your idea and instantiate it into a prototype today. Actually getting to full production is still, there's still kind of the obstacles there, uh, uh, partly because the manufacturing industry isn't helping us a whole lot in small batch manufacturing. But, uh, but nonetheless, it's changing the idea of how we make things, where we make things, you know, who gets to make things, and, and actually what we end up making. Now Deming, uh, you probably know, he, you know, he said this many, many years ago, innovation comes from the producer, not the customer. And I think that's how traditional businesses still think. They don't think of their customer as an innovator, as a participant, or at least a partner in the creation and production of things. Um, and, and I think you know, what we are doing in some ways, what happens when you see your customer as the producer? Uh, and to some degree, you become the facilitator in that. And I would call that sort of collaborative production or co-production. You sometimes hear the terms co-creation and others. But I want to show you some examples that I see emerging. They're probably small from your point of view, maybe insignificant, but I think there are actually signals on, on what's happening and, and what's new out there. Um, before I go forward though, you know, not too many miles from here, uh, this is an example, uh, a photo from the Lowell Mills. You know, the first, in, first factory, really, a uh, textile factory in, uh, in the US, and, and its, its real uh, achievement was taking the, all the, all the things that were done out in the cottage industries, you know, the different skill sets, and bringing them into one unified process. So from beginning to end, from the, you know, the bales of wool arriving to, you know, the finished product out at the end. And this is how the industrial economy was organized, you know, really in contrast to the craft economy and things that preceded it. And in many ways, I think when we talk about collaborative production, we're looking at something different than that single factory, and it looks in some ways like a, 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 a hybridization of that and the craft economy. So this is a company out of London called Nitton, and they, um, uh, they are, it's, a, it's a boutique shop where you can go and get buy knitwear. But what's really fascinating to me is that's an industrial sewing machine, um, a knitting machine in the shop. So what you order is made while you're there. It's like a bakery that has an oven, right? Instead of sending it off to China, it's made right there. And you actually can, using an iPad app, change you know, the design and change what's going on there. Um, and and you, know, you may go shop for 20 minutes, and you come back and your sweater is made for you, or scarf. Now this is something I was working on, and it's kind of actually a sort of classic idea around 3D printing is, well, something breaks and you can repair it or, or make something to replace it. This is an oven knob, kind of a standard issue oven knob, but uh, I had one that cracked and I, I thought, well, I'm gonna see if I can't uh, make it. I don't have great 3D design skills, so I thought my first thing is I'll see if I could scan it. And the scans didn't work because you know, there's sort of a top and a bottom to this and that's sort of a rotational scanner. Um, I, I got horrible scans off it and that was not a way forward. So, um, so I went to Thingiverse and it's a, it's a library of digital uh, objects. And I found lots of actually knobs and some of them might have worked. But what I found that was really interesting was this customizable knob. And and I actually think this is really important. So instead of just finding the digital file and downloading it, I, I, this is using a parametric design so that I could put these values in and change that shape. And based on just doing the measurements on the knob I had, I could generate a digital file that was specific to my needs. And so you could think of this like a template. Um, you think of it just as a, as a recipe to make a knob that's custom. 
And, you know, that's what the knob looked like um, when, when I brought it into a 3D uh, editing program. And, uh, you know, the, underneath there's a stem and there's all these different things. But uh, this was a, a different way that I think many of us that don't have 3D design skills could, could get something made. And I could imagine a future where we have catalogs of these kind of parts, not just the finished part, but these customizers that allow you to, to get what you need.